What is up enthusiasts? It is Cedar Flags here and welcome back to another one of my videos. If you're a roller coaster enthusiast or a thrill seeker just like me, you probably know a lot about the roller coaster industry and how it mostly operates. And you probably keep track of a lot of updates like an amusement park opening or closing, the statistics of a roller coaster ride, and most importantly, the new innovative inventions that some companies introduce to amusement parks on a yearly basis. And this changes a lot, especially if you've been a coaster enthusiast for a while, then you can easily remember something big that's happened in your lifetime that has overall changed the amusement park. And if we really look back, the amusement park we all know and love today wouldn't be possible without many companies that have come and gone in the past that have come up with new innovative rides to, well, change the structure of what we call an amusement park. And today, we are going to be looking at one of the more recent examples of this, Rocky Mountain Construction. Rocky Mountain Construction, better known as RMC, is a roller coaster manufacturer that's based in Idaho and has been taking the amusement park industry by storm. And, well, it has in such a short amount of time. Back in 2010, they started making rides, and as of June of 2019, they already have 17 operating roller coasters, and if that wasn't enough, all of these roller coasters are some of the best on the planet. A lot of people say that these rides are either the best, or at the very least, the second best at the park that they're situated in. So, how did this company get so much critical acclaim in less than a decade? Well, let's ask the question, how did RMC get so popular? Well, to answer that question, we're going to have to go back a little bit. Well, basically, you know how they have been designing roller coasters for the past 10 years? Well, it actually goes back a little more than that. Fred Grubb, the founder of RMC, founded the company back in 2001 in his garage in Idaho. He originally wanted it to be an amusement park construction company to help focus more on the construction aspect of roller coasters, rides, and different attractions involving water parks, arcades, nature parks, etc. He first hired 10 workers. It started off as a really small company. Over the early to mid 2000s, Rocky Mountain Construction grew really fast as a company, even though that they weren't as popular as manufacturers like Intamin and B&M, they were still working in the shadows as ride constructors and designers for other attractions like zip lines and water parks. By the late 2000s, Fred Grubb really did want more for the company, and even though that the company was extremely successful at the time, he still wanted to do more overall for the coaster industry. And that's when he met world-renowned designer Alan Schilke in 2007. I'm Alan. I designed this ride. Yes, you certainly <laughs> did. Back in the early 90s, a young Alan Schilke was looking for a job, and he quickly found a job in an article in a newspaper titled, Aerodynamics Help Wanted. If you don't know already, Aerodynamics was one of the biggest roller coaster manufacturers of all time, and it was a truly innovative one. Alan Shulky quickly went up the ranks in the aerodynamics business, and even though the company was still falling, he really enjoyed his job. If you don't know, in the late 90s to early 2000s, Aerodynamics really went downhill and finally filed for bankruptcy in 2002 after the creation of their final ride, X, designed by, you guessed it, Alan himself. Alan quickly moved up to the chief designer, and he quickly designed a lot of rides for the company until the very end. After that, he quickly found a job at SNS and designed a very few amount of roller coasters there, and that lasted him a little bit of a job through the mid-2000s, but this is where we come back to his meeting with Fred Grubb back in 07. He wanted to meet up with RMC because he wanted to change it, and Fred himself, of course, wanted to change RMC as well, and that is when they came up with the first concept of the infamous iBox track. And that now brings us to Six Flags Over Texas in 2009. So they knew about the iBox track concept, and they know that they worked with them in the past to build rides like El Toro, so they said, why not we give it a shot? And little did they know that shot would change the coaster industry as we know it forever. Six Flags Over Texas had an old rickety wooden roller coaster called the Texas Giant, built by the Din Corporation over a decade ago. Well, let's just say it was starting to show its age. The lines were getting shorter, but the structure was absolutely massive. 
So RMC went, changed the ride, put their sweet fancy iBox track on it, put some new elements with the support structure, and experimented a little bit to create new Texas Giant. In 2011, guests found that in the place of the old Rickety Woody was a new ride that used the same supports, but with an oddly red track. The new ride is 4,200 feet long, is 153 feet tall, and boasts a drop of 147 feet, putting guests at a max speed at over 65 miles an hour at a 79 degree angle with many other banked curves, fast airtime hills, and a very long experience. And this is easily what put RMC on the map. There is no question about that. It quickly grew up on the Golden Ticket Award list, which is basically a roller coaster enthusiast's list of the best roller coasters in the world. And this quickly climbed up there pretty fast. And let's just say it went pretty high. So this got world-renowned attention and quickly put RMC on the map right next to companies like Intamin, B&M, and a lot of coaster enthusiasts ask the question, what are they going to do next with this iBox track? Well, let's just say they did a lot. At this point for Alan, Fred, and the rest of the RMC construction crew, the sky was the limit. They quickly stopped focusing more on skylines, and they quickly put more into the roller coasters. Even though they took a break in 2012, quickly in 2013, they came out with two different roller coasters. First was Iron Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas, still known today as one of the best rides from that company. It was a remodelation of their old Rattler wooden roller coaster built by the Roller Coaster Corporation of America, which was, well, to say at the least, also showing its age. And just like New Texas Giant, Iron Rattler gained a big reputation as one of the best roller coasters on the face of the earth and giving it a pretty good spot on the Golden Ticket Awards that same year. I mean, Rocky Mountain construction at this point, the sky was the limit, like I said, and this is now a top-notch company, even though two roller coasters have came out. On the addition with that, they also came out with Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City in 2013 as well, but instead of a whole new conversion of an old wooden roller coaster, this was a ground-up built wooden roller coaster from the company themselves, using a brand new concept called the Topper Track. This involved an upgraded steel track on top of wooden track so that when you ride a wooden roller coaster by Rocky Mountain Construction, you better bet that it is going to be pretty smooth. On top of that, the ride also features some pretty unique elements such as a double barrel roll which made this the first ride to invert twice made out of wood and a wave turn which was the first seen on an RMC and this element itself took the world by storm. Continuing in the follow years, First came Medusa's Steel Coaster at Six Flags Mexico, then came Wicked Cyclone at Six Flags New England, Twisted Colossus at Magic Mountain, and, well, the company just exploded from there. They have grown from three roller coasters to 17 in such a short amount of time, and now they're expanding worldwide with rides like Untamed at Wallaby, and they have Wildfire at Colmarden in Sweden, as well as Hakugi, also known as White Whale, at Nagashima Spa Land in Japan, and definitely more to come. All of these rides are absolutely incredible, and everyone is saying that these rides are some of the best on Earth. So, now here's the main part of the video, the question... How did they get so popular so vast? And my answer is innovation. To put it from a certain perspective, what if you were the owner of an amusement park and one of your tallest rides was an old wooden roller coaster that no one really rides anymore? It's bumpy, it's rough, and you have a lot of money left over. And what could you do? You could build a huge new ride in its place for let's say $20 million, or you could put a new ride in there, use the same support structure, and make it a lot better of a ride with, well, let's say half the price. This is the company that has reduced, reused, and recycled what we call the amusement park industry. And I guarantee that this company will continue to come out with new concepts, such as the T-Rex track that has been rumored. On top of a new concept that they just came out with, the Raptor track, these are ground up steel roller coasters that have an extremely short layout and an extremely fast pace. 
these rides, especially the other rides of Rocky Mountain Construction, show everyone what they could do with something that was old and forgotten and turn it into something new, something that has purpose once again. This is Cedar Flags, and I will see you guys later.